It is a great pleasure that you're here today. This is a very momentous occasion. It has been since... Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you the Governor of Guam, Eddie Basakaba. Good morning. Good Lord's blessing upon all of you. Uh, before I start in my speech, I'd like to first recognize two individuals, and with that, then a moment of silence. Especially that their passing comes in a time when we are about to break ground on an institution, a facility, a concept, a spirit that uh, made their being. I want to acknowledge and welcome again Ms. Marguerite Palomo and the Palomo family. Uh, I want to acknowledge again the passing and the life of the late Senator Tony Palomo. And I acknowledge my father here, my dad. My first experience with Tony Palomo is as, a, is as a teenager. He was good friends and allies and a partner with my father. They ran together in 1974 for the governorship, and the lieutenant governorship. And I, I remember that because Ms. Palomo, your husband, especially for young teenagers, sometimes we're intimidated by powerful leaders. But, Number one, when I first met your family and our families met, I looked at my brothers and sisters, and you know, there's eight of us, and I said, my goodness, their family is bigger than ours. <laughs> and then I read, he had a very unique laugh, laugh. And um, for a young teenager, all of a sudden you get, you know, a feeling not of intimidation, but oh, what a nice person. Even as a young teen, I felt comfortable with your husband. Then, as, of course, as I grew up and I learned a lot more about him, what a special man he was. He was a man in his early years that chronicled the events of a very young democracy. He reported the news of the movers and shakers. Then he became a mover and shaper. Then in the latter parts of his life, proud of what he saw in the history and the culture of Guam, he became a chronicler of our history, our rich history. He 
made it known for anyone why any person with Chamorro ancestry should be proud of the Chamorro, proud to be a Romanian. And then we have the passing of Bert Ballendorf. I did not know him until the later parts of my life. I knew his family, his daughter. We knew each other since high school. But when I got to know Dr. Ballendorf, I knew him actually through my baby boy, my son. Uh, it was my wife that would always pick them up from school. By the way, my, my boy's now in college. But as she was picking them up from school, my son would always say, can you turn it to the radio? There was a show called Island Insights. And my son was fascinated by the stories that were told by Dr. Ballendorf about Guam and our history, about the history of our culture and, and Micronesia. And I saw in my young son a fascination and a pride uh, of knowing that he came and he was born and he came to Guam. With Dr. Ballendorf, from what he brought to the people of Guam in this region, is a sense of knowing that there's pride, you should be proud. Not only being Chamorro, not only being Romanian, but proud of being a Micronesian. We are Micronesians. So with that, I would like before I start here, for a moment of silence to two men that were movers and shakers of our heritage and our people in this, in this region of the world. I want to acknowledge our leaders today, our spiritual leader, our elected leaders, those that have involved in this project for the building of this facility, all those that are elected are also appointed into office both in federal and local government. And most importantly, all of you, the people, the citizens of Guam. 4,000 years, and by the way, I wish you had the view that I have right now. I see people, I see a church, a beautiful church. I see the walls of a palace that are now being renovated. I see the Plaza de España and behind me, of course I don't see, but beautiful Skinner Plaza. What a beautiful island we live in. 4,000 years, 4,000 years. I, I want to acknowledge again, Mr. Moffness, thank you so much for the job you're doing. There, there was a little bit of an error when you said a, a millennia separates the inhabitants of Guam, the first inhabitants of Guam with the American Revolution. It's actually more than three and a half millennia. As you look at society today, time is measured by a very special man. For some of us, we consider him the son of God, others a great prophet or a teacher. But for whatever, your, whatever you tie to the significance of this man, time, time is designated between when he was on this earth before it and after. That is B.C. and A.D. And if you look at time, it's been 2,000 years since this man, I consider him the Son of God, walked the shores of Galilee. Now, if we were to go back 2,000 years, and somehow we were to be transported to this island 2,000 years ago, well, there would be a vibrant community living in this island, living off the land and the ocean. And this community would have been in existence in this island for nearly 2,000 years. Think about that. 
think about that. From the time from 0 AD or 33 AD till today, that same time separates when the first individuals, for whatever reasons, came to our shores. They came 2,000 years before that great man walked the shores of Galilee. That's a long history. Um, we're building this facility now, and we're building it in the heart of Agatnya. I know there was a little bit of controversy, and I must take the credit for the controversy. It was my decision, and my role and responsibility to govern to make that decision. I felt it important that that facility, the Guam Chamorro and Educational Facility, be, to be built in the heart of Agatnya, the capital of our island. Ladies and gentlemen, it is, how would you say, a multi-dimensional reason for why I made that decision. As we are now in the first decade of the 21st century, and I listen to the memories of my father and what my grandmother used to tell me, and my mother, about pre-war Guam and how it they lived here, and half the people lived here, and how dynamic and vibrant this community was. I believe that we put this facility here in the heart of Aganya, it would be the spark that would re-energize our capital city to not only get it back to what it was before the war, but even to its greatest heights. Because I'm a firm believer, we energize our capital city, what it means to re-energize our island and our people. And I also believe, with this facility here, as Mark Bodigo mentioned, Mark, we have such a beautiful area here for our tourists to come. They will come here, they visit our church, they visit the Plaza de España, they're going to come here. It, in an economic sense, I believe, that facility here, would re-energize us, our community, economically. But even more, it would foster and stimulate a resurgence in our identity, our culture. Looking back at our history, knowing your history, if you know your history, then it makes it very clear on where you want to go what you want to be. It's important to have it here. Um, about two weeks ago, it was a week or two weeks ago, I was at the Chamorro village. And I had an opportunity to speak in front of a bunch of young kids, the Tourism Education Council. These are children between 10 and 17, and they were taking a tour of Agatnya, and they were to be given a little briefing of what the historical significance of Agatnya was. And what I remembered most as I was talking to them and listening to them, and as I talked about, I mentioned that that Plaza de España where we are right now, I mean, excuse me, the Paseo where we were right there, that if you were to go to the outfield or you were to go to the beautiful Statue of Liberty of 50, 60 years ago, people would think you performed a miracle because you'd be walking on water. There was no land there. That was the ruins of Agatnya with the liberation uh, bombardment. When I talked to them that the governor used to live and work right over there at the Plaza de España, when I talked to them a little bit about history, you see their eyes open up, uh, the excitement of learning a little bit more about Guam. And then I mentioned, by the way, first people that come to Guam, if you guys read the Bible, that was around the same time that uh, Abraham, the father of the three great religions, was making his trek from Ur to that promised land. It was the same time 
that the Egyptians were building the pyramids. You see the fascination on the eyes of those young people. And that's why we're building that facility right here, right now. It's those young people, those young citizens of Guam, the spark in their eye, when they have one facility, one facility that they can see how Guam was post and pre-war, the American period, the Spanish period, the Latte period, the pre latti period, they will have an education, an understanding of the legacy of this island. And what I see happening with the building of this facility, that in the years ahead, there will be a new Tony Palomo, a new Dirk Ballendorf. And the work and the, and the knowledge they get would not have it because they have to go to the Bishop Museum in Hawaii or the National Archives or the Imperial Museum in Madrid. That education and that pride would have come from within this island in this grand facility. This, it's ironic, this facility is about our past. But more importantly, it sets the way for our future. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to first uh, close by thanking some of our community partners. And I, I want to acknowledge, again, the GDB working with the hot bonds, uh, Speaker Wampat, Vice Speaker Cruz. We passed that legislation to give the resources to build this facility. You see that beautiful Plaza de España being renovated. Right now, they're working on the community center in Rahan. We've been working on the bell tower uh, in, in Malesu. There's a lot of good stuff coming. Thank you. I want to thank the Guatnia Cristobal, our designers. What a beautiful facility. R.W. Armstrong, Barry Howard and Associates, and all those that have been involved in this process. So ladies and gentlemen, and again, I want to take something out of what I uh, listened in, in, this, in a in a gospel a few weeks ago, Archbishop. But I see here, when you talk about the mustard seed, you remember that was in the gospel, I think two weeks ago, the mustard seed. Uh, you can either sprinkle it, and you either put it on a rocky path, or in a thorn bush, under thorns, or you put it in good soil. Well, the proud history of our island has been in places like Madrid, Manila, Cebu, Honolulu, Washington, D.C., Rome. I kind of think of that as the rocky path and under the thorn bush. But when you put it in good soil, when you could put it in good soil, right here in the heart of Agatha, then that little seed becomes the biggest of plants. Thank you. Congratulations. God bless you. Thank you very much, Governor and First Lady. Again, thank you very much. And now the moment when we are all here for the symbolic groundbreaking. For front, and on the count of five, we will begin to break ground. One, two, three, four, five. Break ground. <laughs> 